Hi there, guys. Well, welcome back. Uh, we're just about to work on 3E. We've just finished 3C and 3D, which were in one video. Um, and now we're talking about quadratic inequalities. Um, this is the last little bit that we're going to do before we get stuck into the complex numbers. So quadratic inequalities. Now, they talk about two methods for solving quadratic inequalities. And I'm, again, lots of people will have seen these before. This is still work which a lot of students will have seen in previous courses. But um, they're talking about two different methods here. And, and I have to be frank, I wouldn't use either of these two methods. <laughs> but I appreciate when they talk about this algebraic method here, I appreciate them saying, uh, coming up with quite a rigorous method. It's just to say, I think that when it, when it comes down to it, this is really overworked. So, what they're basically talking about is if we can make a factorization for our um, for our quadratics, and if we said, uh, I don't know, let's say this x minus 2 and then this x plus 3, and if we want to know when is this greater than 0, well, when you times two things together, here's something times something. When you times something to, two things together and you get an answer which is greater than 0, either they're both bigger than 0, or they're both less than zero. In other words, they're both negative. Two negative signs together to give you a positive. And of course, if it's less than zero, then one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative, or vice versa. And when we go to look at that in terms of the questions, and so you know, if you understand that, you think, well, okay, this is a reasonable method. But I'm, I'm telling you that I'm going to find a quicker method for you. Um, so they're saying here, well. Look, we're, when, after we factorize this thing, and this does also rely on us factorizing this thing, because if we get nasty solutions out, that's going to be a little harder to deal with if they're not nice, neat solutions and nice, neat linear equations. So anyway, let's let's have a little look. So this one is saying, well, again, we're big, greater than or equal to zero here, which means either they're both, those brackets are bigger than zero, or they're both less than zero, i.e. two positive times together or two negatives times together give you something which is positive. Okay, so that gives you either this or this. So let's take that first case and the second case. Well, in the first case, there's your two solutions from taking these two a bit further. Okay, so that's leading to this. So they're saying x is greater than three or equal to three or x is greater than or equal to a half from this thing here. It's just solving those. But when we're saying, okay, well, we've got that x is greater than or equal to 3, or x is greater than or equal to minus 2, well, but minus, minus half. Minus a half is there on the number line. x is 3 is there on the number line. We have to be either there and, sorry, and. It's, it's and, it's not or here. It's saying this has to be this and this, not this or this. This has to be the case. This is both... Um, Positive and positive, not positive or positive. And when we're saying and in mathematics with inequalities and we've got two sets of them, then they both have to be true. Now, they're only both true when we're when we're saying this and this. Now, if they both, if it was this, if it was one or the other, then we'd say, well, this is this is a, a set which covers both of those scenarios. Because they're saying and, it has to be valid for both of those things. So for valid for this and this, a bit like doing the intersection on your Venn diagrams. That's like and, but if we were saying if we're saying this or this, we'd actually be including this bit as well. And we'd say, well, that covers both of them, okay? Like the union. So in other words, when we're saying this and this, that, that boils it down to just this bit, okay? Bigger than three, bigger than or equal to three, greater than or equal to three. OK, so you see why this is more complicated, this this process. If we look at the second set here, so we're looking at this and this, that boils down to these two sets of solutions. And again, we've got x is less than three, less than or equal to two. OK, and we've got x is less than or equal to minus a half. And where are they both true? Well, they're both true for this section here. Now, I think that that's super complicated really and that's giving us our final set of solutions which they're saying can be written like this but by the way it's fine to write them like this x is greater than or equal to three comma 
x is less than or equal to minus a half. Now, they're saying as well, that's the same as going from infinity to minus a half, and then from three to infinity, remember close bracket if we're allowed to include the number. Okay, and union to say we're combining these two sets. Now we're combining those two sets with union there because there's an or in the middle. Okay, there's a ton of explanation there. And uh, I gotta say, I wouldn't do it like that at all. So let's do another valid method. So let's look at this again. Let me just remind myself of the factorization. So we had x minus three and, and two x plus one. So x minus three and two x plus one. So obviously you need to be able to do the technique of factorizing first of all. And we talked about that earlier, and I'm not gonna talk about that here. But now when we're talking about this being greater than or equal to zero, I would just say, let's just plot this as a graph. Plotting it as a graph gives us a solution at three, gives us a solution at minus a half, and the graph is going to be something like this. I don't care where it crosses here. And all I care about is where is y greater than zero? Well, where's it greater than zero? We're looking for where is y greater than zero? Well, it's greater than zero here and here. Well, where is that on the x-axis? That's here and here. Okay, so I've come down to my solutions there straight away, and I've just said, well, when x, sure, when y is greater than or equal to zero, or when x is less than or equal to a half, or when x is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so there's our set of solutions. And we haven't had to go through all of that formal, algebraic, logical thinking. Um, we've just said, well, let's sketch it. We can sketch quadratics really easily. And where are we above the axis? Um, now, you also need to know, of course, that this was a positive quadratic. I perhaps forgot to mention that, of course, this is a positive quadratic. If there was a minus in front of that whole thing, then I'd end up going like this instead. And if we were above the axis, that would actually be between our two roots instead in that case. OK, but either way, actually, we can kind of avoid negative quadratics by just taking everything the other side and making it positive. So let's look at another question here. And let's look at question 10. Now, they give us another method here, which is the sign table. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so this is, um, <laughs> this is another method. You might like this one. Let's have a look at this. Does it solve this quadratic inequality? Well, perhaps this one doesn't factorize. So you might try factorization first, but then you realize it doesn't. So then you use the quadratic formula and you're getting out these solutions. And these solutions, when you put them together, give you three. That's from doing five plus seven divided by four. If we do five take away seven divided by four, we end up with minus a half. There's our two solutions. Now they're saying, well, look, we've got interesting areas here. We've got the solution of minus a half and the solution of three. It seems like the same as the last one. Is it the same as the last one? It's the same as the last one. Okay, it's exactly the same as the last one. Okay, they're doing it in a different approach. Okay, so um, yeah, they're saying here, well, there's your two solutions. We've done it using the formula in this case, which is fine, We've done that. That, that didn't really matter, to be honest, but we get our two solutions, which we could have got from factorization. And um, then we just look at what happens in this area, and then in this area, and then in this area here. Oh, and they've also looked at what happens when it's equal to. Well, frankly, we know it's going to work when it's equal to because they're roots. So I wouldn't even bother considering, considering those there. But they're saying, well, what happens when we've got x is less than a half? Well, just think, come up with a number. Put in minus 10. Put minus 10 in there and see what happens. If you get a number which is bigger than zero, which in fact you do, then it's right. It gives us a positive answer. Now try a number which is in between our two roots. So say, for example, try zero. Put zero in here, I can see we end up with minus 3. And minus three is negative, so it's going to be negative there, which is not positive. So this is not right. This is not a region we want. And then a number which is greater than three, so just try an easy number like 10. Again, you can see when we put 10 in here, 
um, we're going to be um, we're going to get a number which is greater than or equal to zero. We can see that two lots of 10 squared is going to completely overshadow all of this stuff here. So uh, this is going to be correct. So you can say yes, no, yes. So that's another way of doing exactly what I talked about with the graph. Okay, um, let's see if there's any more questions on this one. There aren't any more questions, but um, I'm going to come up with a question myself here because there was something else I was talking about. I was just talking about negative quadratics. So when we were talking about, say, for example, I don't know, we get a minus 2x squared then plus 10x and then, I don't know, minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. So how would you deal with that? Just change the sign around and say greater than or equal to 0. Let's say greater than 0. Well, I would just take everything to the other side to make things easier. So we get 2x squared minus 5 minus 10x plus 2 is less than zero there. So, so we've now just taken all of this stuff to the other side. We've not times are divided by a negative, so that's fine. Um, and then of course you can see that this actually all divides by two. So we say x squared minus five x plus one is less than zero. We can also write less than zero on the end there if you want to, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so, um, and, yeah, and, and then at that stage, we're then saying, well, okay, let's, again, let's find our two solutions. And you can do that using the quadratic formula. I doubt this one's going to factorize. And when you find your two solutions, we can see, again, this is a positive quadratic. So you can always make these things positive quadratics, saying, where is this less than zero? It's going to be less than zero between our two roots. So this is x1 and x2. Then we're going to say that x is between those two particular solutions, which we have equals to zero. So we never really have to deal with the case where we have negative quadratic. Okay, now all of our solutions here are either going to be either side of the two roots or between the two roots. Okay, because that's the nature of quadratic. Okay, well, that's a really short video. That might be a record. Um, we've got three. Uh, you can have a go at a few of those questions there. Next, you've got complex numbers. Can't wait. Okay, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.